What you are seeing is security camera footage of four American Olympians leaving the bathroom of a gas station in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. This guy right here, that's Ryan Lochte, one of the greatest Olympic swimmers of all time. In fact, a few days before this clip, he won a gold medal in the 4x200 meter relay, so he and his buddies were out celebrating, and they've had a little too much to drink. They stumble out of the alleyway and try to get into their taxi and leave, but then some unmarked officers take out their weapons and demand the swimmers to exit the vehicle. Next thing you know, Ryan Lochte has a gun pointed at his forehead, and they rob him of all his money. Well, that's what Ryan told news reporters the next day, but it turns out he was lying but not by much. The truth of the story is just a little bit different than what Ryan reported, but that discrepancy was enough to fundamentally destroy Ryan's reputation and swimming career forever. In order to fully analyze why this lie was such a massive issue, you have to first understand that Ryan Lochte was a living legend, who worked his whole life for his legacy to crumble at the blink of an eye. Ryan earned a swimming scholarship at the University of Florida. During his college days, he became the SEC champion seven times, the NC NCAA champion seven times, as well as earning the NCAA Swimmer of the Year twice while being a 24-time All-American athlete. In his senior year, he set the record for the 200-yard backstroke and the 200-yard individual medley at the 2006 NCAA Men's Swimming and Diving Championships, where he also won national titles in all three of his individual events. But his dominance wouldn't stop in college. At the 2004 Olympics in Athens, he won a gold and silver medal for the 4x200-meter freestyle relay and 200 meter individual medley. Over the next decade, he'd go on to win a total of 12 Olympic medals and seven individually, making him the second most decorated American male swimmer behind Michael Phelps. He broke multiple world record times for different races, including the record for the 200 meter medley that he still holds to this day. A multi-time swimmer of the year, million dollar sponsorship deals with the likes of Speedo, Gillette, and Ralph Lauren, a Playboy model girlfriend, Lochte was becoming a global icon alongside Michael Phelps. Ryan himself said it was a Magic Johnson and Larry Bird type rivalry. But it was at the peak of Lochte's popularity, immediately after he won the gold medal for the 4x200 relay at the 2016 Rio Olympic Games, where his sport-defining waves and competitive swimming would all come crashing down. Now you all know that using steroids will get you disqualified from the Olympics, but what if you actually had to be on them to qualify? I read this article on Peter Thiel's Olympics on Steroids with athletes wearing Apple's Vision Pro. This headline piqued my interest and I wanted to learn more. So using today's sponsor, I read through the ground news breakdown of nearly 90 articles covering this new doped up version of the notoriously drug-free competition. 25% of these articles come from right-leaning sources. You could have missed this if you consume mostly conservative media. Go to ground.news slash patrickcc to read their summary of this from different political viewpoints, see any key differences in their coverage, or scroll down to read the actual articles. Many focused on how risky this competition could be while others reported Olympic athletes having mixed feelings. An ex-drug cheat slams the enhanced games while a nine-time Olympic champion sees the benefits. By gathering related news articles from across the world and adding context like a source's political lean, how reliable they are, and even who owns them, Ground News makes it really easy to explore your curiosity and learn all sides of a story that could never fit in one single article, which is why I like to follow my favorite topics like music on Ground News to really dive deep on stories that might have missed my radar. And with a monthly plan costing less than my daily coffee, I really think they're unlike any other news platform. So check them out at ground.news slash patrickcc and get 40% off the same plan that I use, their unlimited access vantage plan. On August 14th, 2016, this tweet that reported Ryan Lochte being held at gunpoint sparked one of the biggest scandals in Olympic Games history. Ben Way, an Australian Fox News reporter, was at the Hotel Grand Mercure conducting interviews with athletes. The hotel was located not far from where the Rio athletes were staying, so this was a hub for interviewers to linger around and try to talk with the athletes. After conducting a few interviews, Ben and his team got on a shuttle that had stops at various hotels around the area. At one of the stops, a woman came out who had injured her foot. Ben and his team quickly helped her and got her on the bus. Once the lady was seated, Ben and her started chatting. Unfortunately, he soon found out that the woman's stay in Brazil was a nightmare. She had broken her foot and her son had been held at gunpoint. Ben could not believe this and asked if her son was okay. She said, yes, he's back at the village. Ben responded, is he an athlete? To which she replied, yes, and he is prone to big nights and that sort of stuff. He has bleached white hair or gray hair or blue hair 
part. I don't really know what it is. Ben's cameraman asked, is your son Ryan Lochte? To which she said, yes, he is. She then elaborated, saying how he had gone to a party late last night with a couple of friends, and he had called her and told her he had been held up at gunpoint, and they stole his wallet and put a gun to his forehead. But luckily, he's back in the athlete's village and he's okay. Ben and his team couldn't believe that this shocking story just fell into their lap. So when they arrived at their next location, which was the Adidas headquarters, they gave their notes to Fox Sports Australia, who ran the story just two hours later. Shortly after the news broke, the International Olympic Committee put out a statement saying, I can tell you the story is absolutely not true, and the United States Olympic Committee is saying, it's a false story. So within two hours, you had one major news outlet reporting the story as true, and the Olympics saying it was false. People were confused and didn't know who to believe, but then Lochte himself doubled down on his story. A few hours later, Billy Bush, former host of The Today Show, and his friend Kit Hoover were returning from a hike. Upon their return back to town, they just so happened to run into Ryan Lochte, who they had seen from a distance inside a building. Billy Bush swiftly approached Ryan for an interview, while Kit filmed it all on an iPhone because they couldn't get a crew out in time. During this impromptu interview, Ryan Lochte gave his first official statement. We got pulled over in our taxi. These guys came out with a badge, a police badge, no lights, no nothing, just a police badge. They pulled us over, they pulled out their guns, they told the other swimmers to get down on the ground. They got down on the ground. I refused. I was like, we didn't do anything wrong. I'm not getting down on the ground. And then the guy pulled out his gun, he cocked it, put it to my forehead, and said, get down. And I was like, I put my hands up, I was like, whatever. He took our money. He took my wallet, he left my cell phone, he left my credential, but he took my wallet and he took all the guys who Keep in mind this interview took place roughly four to five hours after the incident had happened. Ryan was still drunk at this point and he had been awake for more than 24 hours on a bender. His recollection of the man cocking the gun and pointing it at his head would send this story into worldwide news. Ironically, this is exactly what people suspected when they found out the Olympic Games were being held in Brazil. As many media outlets questioned if Rio was safe enough to host. Around 42,000 people are killed in gun crimes every year in Brazil, and from January until until May 2016, the Rio de Janeiro area had 2,036 murders. One article reported parts of a mutilated body washed up on the shore of a beach next to an Olympic venue. Although Brazil's government granted $895 million to cover Olympic security spending, it was said it might not be enough to fund police officers with the necessary equipment to keep crime at bay, with one anonymous officer saying, you encounter a drug trafficker with lots of ammunition and you have 20 bullets. It's absurd. Showing the world that Rio could be a safe place for the Olympic Games was the number one priority of everyone involved in the local government. Hosting the Olympics can create billions of dollars in revenue from tourism before, during, and after the Games, along with boosting the economy and building all the infrastructure needed to host multiple sports. After Ryan's robbery story, Brazilians received tons of additional fuel to the narrative that their country is unsafe and dangerous. So Brazilian authorities were scrambling to find out the real story, and they found some inconsistencies. They were given footage of Lochte entering metal detectors back at the Olympic Village at 6.56 a.m., which was roughly 40 minutes after they claimed to be robbed. The footage was released in slow motion for some reason, and Brazilian judge Caleb Blanc de Nap believes the men did not show any signs of having experienced violent crime, particularly pointing to when Lochte playfully boops Fegan on the head with his credentials. But this seems like extremely minimal evidence to prove that the men had not experienced a crime. Maybe they were trying to just act an natural and forget about the evening. Maybe they were distraught, but the slow motion footage is hard to interpret. Brazilian investigators were also unable to find evidence to support the swimmer's claims, nor were they able to find the taxi cab driver whose cab was allegedly pulled over. These inconsistencies were enough to accuse the swimmers of reporting a false crime, which is a crime in itself, and the judge ordered a seizure of Lochte and his teammates' passports so they could be brought in for questioning. I guess being interviewed on the news is considered reporting a false crime because Lochte never reported a crime to the police in the first place. After all, he thought he was robbed by the police. From there, two of his teammates were pulled off their flight home, but by now, Lochte had already made it back to America. Ryan probably felt guilty that his friends were being held back in Brazil. When he got home, he changed a few key details of his story, which would be the biggest mistake of his life.
As you can imagine, every news outlet tried to get another statement from Ryan, and he would give one to Matt Lauer on a private phone call on Wednesday, August 17th. However, Ryan changed a few details of the events. At first, he reported that they got pulled over in their taxi, and that the men displayed to him a police badge, as well as pulling out guns. He changed his story to say that they did not get pulled over, but rather when they left the bathroom to get back to the taxi, they told the taxi driver to go, and he didn't move. He said, let's go again, we've got to get out of here, and again, the taxi driver didn't move. That's when he says two men approached the car with guns and badges, told them to get out, and to get on the ground. But the big difference that Ryan changed in his story was how he described the gun situation. Remember, Ryan initially said that the man cocked it and put the gun to his head. Well, he changed it to, that's when the guy pointed the gun in my direction and cocked it. Now, the basis of Ryan's story remains the same, which is that he was robbed at gunpoint. But with all the negative press Brazilians had been given, Getting, Ryan's discrepancy was enough for authorities to dismiss Lochte's story as fabricated. At this exact moment, what the police can confirm is there was no robbery in the way that it was reported by the athletes. Authorities then release multiple security camera angles to the public that display the events of the evening. Many news outlets use the footage and Lochte's change of the story to run pieces saying, mounting evidence indicates Ryan Lochte fabricated Rio robbery story, or Lochte lied, or Lochtegate. I can't stress enough how much worldwide news coverage there was about this story. It was literally everywhere. Every major and minor news outlet in the world ran a piece on Lochte, which took all of the spotlight away from all other Olympic athletes. Media didn't cover the games, they just wanted to talk about Ryan. A judge in Rio ordered Ryan prohibited from leaving Brazil and even tried to collect his passport. The craziest part is that still, seven days after all this chaos and worldwide reporting, nobody knew the real story from start to finish. Most of the world had already branded Lochte a liar and didn't even care to hear the truth. But the real story is not that much different than what he said had happened. On August 14th at 6am, Ryan Lochte, Gunnar Bentz, Jack Conger, and Jimmy Feagan stopped at a Shell gas station to use the bathroom since they had been drinking all night. When they arrived at the gas station, the bathroom doors were locked, so the four swimmers went out back and relieved themselves in the bushes. Walking back through an alleyway, Ryan saw an advertisement poster and in an intoxicated state, he thought it would be funny to rip the sign off the wall. Now you can see the footage released by Brazil's Globo TV cuts one full minute out, from 6.07 and 33 seconds AM to 6.08 and 33 seconds AM. The camera cuts to the sign being on the ground. You can't actually see who ripped the sign down. Why was that footage cut? Is that not the most important part of the investigation? The Rio police chief also stated that the intoxicated swimmers vandalized a gas station bathroom, breaking a door, mirror, and soap dispenser. USA Today eventually did their own investigation and released the footage of someone knocking down the sign, but you can't confirm who it is. They also went to the bathroom the next day to investigate the damage. They found the mirror and the soap dispenser were not vandalized, and they were not replaced as they were not brand new. And at the back are the restrooms that reports say were badly damaged, though we can see no sign of that now. This confirms that the real police are actually the ones who lied about him vandalizing the bathroom. Now the footage doesn't necessarily prove that Ryan ripped the sign down, but he admitted to doing it, so. Anyways, the metal sign was huge and made a loud sound as it hit the ground, prompting workers to go over and see what happened. The four swimmers walk back into their taxi and almost immediately a security guard leans into the cab and seemingly points a weapon at the men. Two minutes go by where the swimmers are trying to convince the taxi driver to leave until they ultimately exit the vehicle. Ryan Lochte begins walking away off screen. Two of the other swimmers go back to the alley where the workers show them the damaged sign. The swimmers don't speak Portuguese so they can only guess that this is what the security guards are upset about. The final angle shows one of the men immediately fall down, almost like he was pushed. Then they keep putting their hands up as they are backed onto a curb where they are asked to sit down. You can see one of the guards has his hand on his hip. It was at this moment that the guards pointed their weapons at the swimmers, which can be 100% confirmed because the guard did report to the police that he pointed his gun at them and demanded that they pay for the damages. Perhaps the biggest and most important piece of the entire story is that the swimmers say nobody spoke English and Brazilian authorities say that there was a translator so the swimmers knew exactly why they were being held. The reason why that is so important is if there was a translator then Ryan knew who these men were and why they wanted money. If 
if there was no translator, then how could he possibly know if these guys were licensed security or just random thugs robbing him? The Brazilian chief of police lied about the men vandalizing a bathroom, and they even confirmed that one of the security guards used the weapon to, quote, contain the swimmers so they could not leave without paying for the damage. The firearm was used in a situation in which they were contained. When they were contained, the firearm was put away. But the police chief went even further to speculate as to why Lochte lied. That it was because the swimmers were having a secret rendezvous with women. The first information came from a driver who had took two young women who left the event. These young women had made out with the swimmers, Veloso said. The swimmers had a reason to tell a story that wasn't true. Again, the Brazilian chief of police pushed a narrative that had absolutely no basis of proof or facts. Perhaps they were trying to get revenge on him for making their country look bad. Now with the full story broken down, it becomes more clear that both Lochte and the Brazilian police lied. You just have to ask yourself which is worse. Most people think Lochte is a vandal, nothing but a scummy tourist who doesn't care about being a guest in a country and thought he could do whatever he wanted without consequences. Others think he was incapable of thinking clearly due to the alcohol, and that the security guards, if that's actually who they are, holding the swimmers at gunpoint was an extremely over-the-top way to get him to pay for a cheap sign. All of the major facts of the case were not only true by Lochte's statements, but also confirmed by the Brazilian authorities. The lie that Lochte was vilified for was his drunken account on the beach where he said a gun was pointed to his head, when in reality, the men were standing a few feet in front of him, pointing the gun at his chest. Everything else he reported was true. They were drunk, ripped down a sign, approached by unmarked, unnamed, random men with guns that they did not understand, who coerced them out of a cab and pointed guns at them until they paid money to be released. Nobody wanted to clarify the story, the damage had been done, and it was better for Ryan to just accept defeat. He hired a crisis PR team to save his image which led to him apologizing for everything. That's why I'm taking full responsibility for it, is because I over-exaggerated that story, and if I'd never did, done that, we wouldn't be in this mess. Although his story was almost entirely true, this apology stamped him as guilty. Not only was his character completely smeared all over the worldwide media, but the Brazilian authorities also tried to file charges against him that were rightfully dropped. Even though he wasn't going to be held criminally responsible, Ryan's main source of income had completely dropped out from under him. Four of his major sponsors, Ralph Lauren, Speedo, Cineron, and Airweave, all decided to terminate their contracts with him, which were all worth an estimated $1 million. This caused a huge hit to his finances. From living in a 4,200 square foot home, he had to move into an 1,800 square foot apartment with his family. It's estimated he only had $20,000 left in savings, and obviously no new sponsors wanted to associate with him. On top of this, the United States Olympic Committee announced he would be suspended for 10 months, making him ineligible to compete in the 2017 World Championship as part of his punishment. Scrambling to make any sort of cash, he auditioned to be on the popular USA television competition, Dancing with the Stars, where a few viewers staged a protest during one of his performances. Excuse me. Oh, oh. Excuse me. Wow. As security detained the stage crasher, a few women in the crowd wearing t-shirts with Lochte written on them covered by a no symbol can be heard chanting, liar. As if it couldn't get worse for him, he was suspended from the Olympics again in 2018 by the US Anti-Doping Agency after he posted a picture on Instagram of him taking an IV. He was not taking drugs. He wasn't using steroids. He did not take a banned substance, but he got an intravenous injection of B12 vitamins, which he took to prevent himself from getting sick. But since it exceeded 100 milliliters, it did not matter what was involved. He broke anti-doping rules, and they needed to make an example out of him again. Ryan responded, A rule is a rule, and I accept that there is a technical violation. At this point in his life, Ryan's reputation was completely tarnished. He was almost flat broke, and was now banned from swimming for another 14 months. Maybe if I like... So maybe if I like go to sleep and not wake up, it will be fine for everyone. Because I just didn't want anyone to be sad or hurt by by me. Ryan spent his days drinking his pain away, 
until a few months later reports came out that he was going to rehab for alcohol addiction. The only silver lining is that his girlfriend at the time stuck by his side through everything. They are now married and they have two children. Today he spends his time public speaking, telling his story, and teaching swim clinics around the country. He tried one last time to qualify for the US Olympic swimming team in 2021, but ultimately finished three seconds short of that goal, putting the final nail in the coffin of his swimming career. You know, I'm a fam uh, I'm very humble. I mean, I have a big heart. I care a lot about my family. He's part of my family. This whole swimming community, they're all part of my family. Um, and I'm a dad. I'm gonna go be a dad right now and give my kids a hug.